what's up guys welcome back if you're just finding my channel my name is Lily and this is where I document my real estate investing journey and bring you guys along with me today I really want to talk about some of the questions that I get a lot that I had a lot when I first started wholesaling and that I don't hear a lot of the big wholesalers answering if you haven't seen this video right here it's episode 8 of an 8 part series I did documenting my first day driving for dollars all the way to getting my first wholesale deal. I'll link the playlist to all eight episodes of that series down below, but something that I learned and that I wanna share with you guys is there was a lot of trial and error in that process because I knew a lot of the big things to do from watching YouTube and reading books, but a lot of the small, minute, but still very important details, I had to learn just by kind of messing up and going through the process. And me saying that like the big wholesalers don't answer those questions is not throwing shade at them. I just think that sometimes they are so big and they've been in the game for so long that that they forget to answer those questions that come naturally to them but that are super important to a new investor it's like when you have that teacher who is obviously very smart and knows what they're talking about but they're just talking on such a high level that it's like dude what but don't worry that's what I'm here for that's why I'm documenting my journey as I go so that I can answer questions as they come up for you guys and as I discover the answers so today we're gonna go through some of the questions that you guys ask me most often some of the ones that I found were really important and mistakes that I made when I was first getting off the ground and if you want to submit questions to me there's a link in the description to a survey where you can tell me exactly what you're struggling with and give me an idea of how I can create content that helps you I read every single one of those survey responses and I know some of you guys also DM me questions on Instagram unfortunately I don't have enough time to answer all of my DMs but if I can get to it I will definitely read it and hopefully put it in a video like this one day and give you the answer and I also have a couple of free resources that you can get right now that will help you get started and answer some of those small but important questions the links will be in the description and you'll see my free offer sheet template which gives you the 10 terms that I include every single time I make an offer so of course that's gonna include price that's gonna include closing date my due diligence period but there's also a bunch of other ones that you'll probably want to include so you can grab that I also have the phone scripts that you're gonna want to use when you're calling real estate agents to make offers on on-market properties and that will just tell you kind of the information that you're gonna need to get how to just sound like you know what you're talking about come across confident build up a relationship relationship with the agent all that good stuff so yeah both of those in the description below we're gonna start from the very beginning so make sure you stay to the end of the video because I'm gonna begin with some of the the initial questions about starting wholesaling in the beginning of the process like finding deals and making offers and then we're gonna move all the way through the process to when you're actually trying to collect your assignment fee from the title company so I'm gonna pull up some questions you know what to do turn that like button blue and let's get started so first up I think this is a good place to start hi Lily I'm completely new to this where should I start yeah, this is a great question. Like there's almost so much information overload out there that you might know step seven and you might know step 17, but like what is step one? In my opinion, step one is getting a good understanding of two things. First, how real estate works. And second, how wholesaling fits into all of that. So if we think about just real estate in general, we know the houses are assets and they go up in value over time, especially if they're in poor condition, someone fixes it up and puts it in nice condition, well, it's gonna be worth more. So while there are a lot of different ways that you can invest in real estate, it all comes back to this same key principle that properties are assets that increase in value over time, especially if you improve their condition. And so wholesaling fits into that because wholesaling is finding that property that's in poor condition and then taking it to some someone an investor who wants to increase it in value in order for them to then you know recoup their investment and make a profit and the wholesaler is just the person that finds those distressed properties for those investors a good example of wholesaling that I like to use when I'm talking one-on-one -on -one with people and, and teaching people how to get their wholesaling businesses started I talk about Home Depot all right so if you think about when you want a new refrigerator or a new lawnmower or something you go to Home Depot or Lowe's to get it but you understand that like they're not building those lawnmowers or those refrigerators in the back of the store, right? Like they bought them from somewhere else and they bought it for cheaper, right? So you can just imagine that Home Depot went to go get a refrigerator from some refrigerator factory and they paid a hundred bucks for it. But well, we don't expect them to then put it on their shelf for sale at a hundred bucks. We know that they're gonna charge more and we're okay with that because they brought it to us, right? We didn't have to go find the refrigerator factory and ask them what models they have and coordinate delivery. Home Depot did all of that work put it right in front of us, and so we're willing to pay them a little bit more. And you can think about that being your cash buyer, your investor, right? Investors are willing to pay you a wholesale fee because you did all the work of finding the distressed property and bringing it to their lap. 
And then if we're really trying to get an overview understanding of wholesaling, we can also think about it from the other side, right? You've got this refrigerator factory. They don't have to sell to Home Depot. They could come and cold call us or come knock on our front door and ask us if we wanted to buy a refrigerator from them. And they could probably sell it directly to us for more than they could sell it to Home Depot for. But they don't want to, right? Like their deal is running this factory and making refrigerators and they're happy to sell them to Home Depot at a little bit less of a price because it's convenient, it's quick, it's easy for them. And that's how a lot of distressed property owners feel. When they're motivated because there's a hole in the roof that they don't wanna deal with or they live out of state and they just wanna get this property off their hands, you're serving as Home Depot. They're very willing to sell the property to you for a little bit cheaper because then they can be done with it. And as the wholesaler, you can then take it to the investor who's willing to purchase it from you for a little bit more expensive because they didn't have to go do all the work to find it, right? So if I was truly like, I want to start investing in real estate, I want to start wholesaling, I've got to understand those two things because then the entire process is going to be easier and everything's going to make a little bit more sense. All right, next question. If you had a hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand. If you had a thousand dollars to use for marketing or tools for your business, what would you spend it on? What type of marketing to find deals? Yeah, this is a great question, and this is something that I actually disagree with a lot of the big wholesalers about. I think if you were to ask this question to some other folks, they might tell you to, you know, pull a list of probate leads or pre foreclosures or vacant out of state homeowners, right? They would tell you to pull a list of homeowners that you think was motivated and to cold call it or uh, send a batch text message blast or to send postcards to them. And I actually disagree because as a beginner, one, I don't want you to go out and spend a bunch of money before you know what you're doing. And, and two, even if you get some responses from motivated sellers who want to sell you their house, you actually don't have the systems in place or the resources in place yet to deal with those leads. And so rather than kind of just hustling and spending as much money as you can afford to get those leads, and then if you get a motivated seller figuring it out as you go, I say that you should save your money for marketing and actually figure out the process and get comfortable answering all of those small minute questions so that when you do get motivated sellers coming into your business, you're able to quickly move them from a motivated seller to a contract, assign it to a cash buyer and pick up a check without kind of messing up that process and losing out on that deal just because you didn't know what you were doing. So. All of that said, to answer the question, if I had $1,000, I wouldn't spend it on marketing. Instead, I would probably take a free trial at PropStream and then maybe pay for $97 for a month of that so that I can have information about properties. But then I would target on-market deals. And those are basically free leads. I'm going to find distressed properties on market. And then I'm going to practice the system of running my numbers, negotiating a price point, so that when I do get an offer accepted, I'm ready to market it to cash buyers and get it to the title company of my choice. But I just have all of those things in place and I can practice with free on-market distress leads. I would also keep some of that $1,000 for earnest money deposit. If $1,000 is all I have, I don't wanna spend it all on marketing because then I might get a seller who wants to accept my offer, but they want $500 of earnest money from me and I don't have it because I sent it on postcards, right? So I would pay for you know a couple of resources, whether it be some mentorship or a service like PropStream so I can have some really good data to run my numbers with, and then I would save the rest for my earnest money deposits. Next up, I would learn how to properly cold call, what to say and what not to say. Now, cold calling is something I personally don't like. And I'm not gonna tell you guys not to cold call because I don't like it. You might like it and you might be better at it than me. So, you know, go forth and prosper. But I will say, think about how you can not cold call, but warm call. And this is a concept that I have in my head. Like if I'm gonna call a vacant property owner or the owner of a house I found driving for dollars, they are cold. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I want. And they're not actively trying to sell their house. And so that's going to be a very tough conversation for some people to manage in terms of getting them to warm up to you and be willing to sell you their property or at least even willing to have a phone conversation with you. But if instead of going like to that end of the spectrum where people are super cold, I find property owners that are a little bit more warm, which means they're more warmed up to the idea of selling their house. Well, then that's an easier deal to manage, especially for a beginner. If you can imagine someone that is actively trying to sell their house, whether they've hired a real estate or it's just a for sale by owner lead or whatever it is, but someone who's actively trying to sell their house is going to be much more willing to have a conversation with you about buying their house than someone who just sees a random number calling them on a random day. 
So I would say as a beginner, think about ways that you can warm call rather than just completely cold calling so that you're not just getting hung up on all day, but you're actually getting some practice talking to agents or property owners and running your numbers and figuring out, you know, what makes a good deal and what doesn't. Getting that practice is going to be vital if you want to continuously do deals and not just get hung up on all day. And this takes us into the next two questions, which I'm actually going to put together. The first one is, how do you get on market properties to wholesale? You know, this, this person said they're currently driving for dollars and they haven't landed a deal yet. Please help. All right. Now the person said, why don't you do FSBO, which stands for for sale by owner instead of dealing just, you know, straight with agents. So both of these are great questions and I'll kind of answer the second one first in that for sale by owner leads, in my opinion, are on market, meaning this is a person that is actively trying to sell their house. That's all on market means to me. It could be a for sale by owner lead. It could be someone who's selling their house, you know, represented by a real estate agent. But the idea is they want to sell. And that is different than off market for someone who is not actively trying to sell. Now, the off market person could still be motivated, but they're just not actively looking for someone to sell to. So if we decide that we do want to look on market for our deals because those sellers are a little bit warmer, we can look at the for sale by owner listings on Zillow. We can set up automatic alerts either from a realtor or just by ourselves on the Redfin or the Zillow website. And we can look for things like lower priced properties in our area. We can look for keywords like as is or distressed or needs updates or cash only all of those types of things tell us where the distressed properties are on market we just have to go look for them now in my market there are fewer for sale by owner leads than there are just you know straight zillow or redfin listings and that means most times you're going to be working with real estate agents and so this next question is actually a text message from a real estate agent to one of you guys and this person sent me the screenshot of it she asked this agent about a property and they responded, I will reach out to the seller's agent and double check. Are you looking to be represented or do you already have an agent? Now, the person who sent me this message was asking me, why is this person reaching out to the seller's agent? I thought they were the seller's agent. And so this is something that I think is super important for beginners to understand. Each party, the buyer and the seller, can have an agent represent them, right? And so the seller has a seller's agent represent them and the buyer can have a buyer's agent represent them. Now, because you as the buyer are an investor, you don't want a buyer's agent. You don't need to talk to the buyer's agent who then will talk to the seller's agent who then will talk to the homeowner. No, we want to cut out the buyer's agent, right? We want to go directly to the seller's agent because they have direct information about the property. They have direct information about the motivation of the owner, all of those things, right? So this person accidentally reached out to a buyer's agent and that's why they were asking, are you looking to be represented? They were asking, can I represent you as the buyer on this deal? So my advice for you guys is don't reach out to buyer's agents. If you look on listings, you're going to see the words listed by or listing agent or seller's agent. And that's what you want. You don't want buyer's agent or buyer's representative or anything like that. You want the listing agent or the seller's agent. Those two things mean the same thing. Once I make an offer with an agent on a property and want to move forward and put it under contract, would I use the agent's contract or a contract of my own? And this one points back to knowing the difference between an on-market deal and an off-market deal. If it's on-market and there's a real estate agent involved, they will send you your state-approved contract for you to sign. Now, you have to tell them, you know, the things that are in that offer sheet, what you want that contract to say, the price, the closing date, your due diligence period, all of that stuff. But once you send them that offer sheet, and you can just type it up in a Word document, you send that to them and they'll send you back the state approved contract for you to DocuSign from your phone or your laptop. So you don't have to have the purchase and sale agreement in that case. If you're going off market, you will have to have the purchase and sale agreement because the homeowner is going to be looking at you like, yeah, you want to buy my house, give me a contract, right? So in that case, if you're off market, you will have to have your own contract. In both cases, on market and off market, you'll have to have an assignment contract because you're going to want to go to your cash buyer and assign them your deal and have that be a legally binding contract that you can then send into the title company, which we'll talk about here in a moment. So this is kind of a twofold answer, but if you're on market, they'll send you the purchase contract. If you're off market, you need to have your own purchase contract. In either way, you need to have your own assignment contracts. If you need contracts and more information about all of that, check the link in my description as well. So title companies. Someone said, I have questions about closing companies, which is the same thing as a title company. 
do I get in touch with one locally and kind of tell them what I'm doing and just do business with earnest money and contracts? All right, great question. So title companies, closing companies, if you're in a state that doesn't use one of those two, you might use a lawyer to close your real estate deals. And you can just find out which one your state uses by Googling it real quick. But either way, this is the company that's gonna take care of making sure the transfer of ownership of the property is legal and recorded, everybody gets their money and everything is good to go. So you are gonna want to use a title company or a lawyer of your choice. And the reason being, most real estate contracts are assignable unless they explicitly say otherwise, but, and this is a big but, and I, I see some arguing in the comments about this, if you get to the closing table and the title company says, we don't like doing assignments, they don't have to do it. It might still be a legal contract. Different title companies do assignments. Some title companies only do double closings and some title companies do neither. So you're gonna wanna know that going in so you don't get to closing day and have the title company not wanna finish your deal. So definitely look up some local title companies in your area, give them a call and ask them right out, do you handle assignments of contracts? You can also Google in your local Facebook group or on the Bigger Pockets forums, what title companies are people using in my city and state, right? And that'll give you some information, but you want to check, make sure that the title company handles all of the things that you need before you actually send them your contract and have them represent you on the closing. And this next question is one that I asked you guys in the survey down below, and it's just, how can I help you, you know, get your wholesaling business started? And some of the responses I got were just how to start, looking for guidance or step-by-step -step mentorship and instruction. And my answer for you guys to that is keep watching these videos, submit questions that you have using the survey so that I can really speak directly to you guys download those free resources that I have. And if you're truly ready to dive in and you really want that kind of in-depth, direct instruction, consider signing up for the new Zoom boot camps that I'm doing. A lot of you guys said you wanted to hop on those Zoom calls, so we're making it happen. We're gonna do these five-day Zoom boot camps where me, you, and the other participants will hop on a Zoom call, and for an hour and a half a night, we're gonna dive deep into every step of the wholesaling process and make sure you get all of your questions answered, and you're prepared to go out there and truly build a wholesaling business that can do repeat deals every single month. So depending on when you're watching this video, check the dates for the next boot camp and get signed up if you're ready to. Like I'm super excited to be putting these on and kind of meet you guys face to face, even though it's gonna be through Zoom, but it's the best that we can do right now. And I think that really going in depth for five days, an hour and a half a day, is really the best way that I can give back to you guys and give you that in-depth direct instruction, the Q&A opportunity that you're looking for to get your wholesaling business started. So I hope I answered some of your questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely use those links in the description and I hope to hear from you soon. Until next time, thanks so much for watching.